Hey friends, Ash here with Gent Scents, and today I've got a fragrance review for you guys where we're going to be going over this one, Loam Rojas. Yes, made by the same people that make Rojas Man, the fragrance with a very interesting bottle. I did a first impression on this fragrance not all that long ago, maybe a month ago at this point. I did a first impression on this fragrance and spoiler alert, it has grown on me since the first impression. This one is available for a very good price in Europe as of right now, though it's not available in the US as of when I'm shooting this video. I do imagine though that it will be available for a very good price in the US when it does drop, especially at discounters. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys why this fragrance should be on your radar if you're looking for a good quality, very versatile, people-pleasing blue fragrance. Yes, blue fragrance. It's another one of those. In this video, I'm gonna break this one down, let you know how it smells, let you know what it reminds me of a little bit, and also go over the presentation as well. So without further ado, let's jump into this and check out Lome Rojas. And again, if I'm pronouncing this incorrectly, sorry about that. First off, let's quickly check out the presentation of this fragrance. Here is a better look at the front of the box. You can see the name of the fragrance and house, size and concentration down here at the bottom. Nothing on the top, nothing on the sides. It's actually got the same thing on the back as the front. And then on the bottom is where you're going to find your ingredients and your badge code. And here is a better look at the bottle for you guys. You get the name of the fragrance and house right here on the front, on the top of the cap, you have the name of the house. The cap does click into place and it is a nice metal cap. Then on the bottom is where you're going to find your badge code. You'll notice that there's no sticker on the bottom of the bottle. It's actually got the badge code etched into the glass up here and then the information around the edge of the glass. It looks really nice. And I'll waste a couple of sprays for you guys here. It's a good atomizer. So this one has blood orange, cardamom, and pineapple in the top of the fragrance. I need to get it out of the way just right here. The pineapple in this fragrance does not remind me of Aventus. This has nothing to do with Aventus. It does smell similar to me to another fragrance out there, and I'll get to that in a second, but Creed Aventus, this is not. So you have blood orange and pineapple in the opening. They mix together, giving this a fruity, fresh sweetness. It does have more blood orange though, than it does pineapple. So the pineapple is more of an accompanying note. The blood orange is what's up front. There's also cardamom here in the opening and the cardamom to me comes across like a green cardamom, more on the fresh side of things. Not as much that type of cardamom that you'll find in date night fragrances where it's more sweet and deep and sexy. Cardamom here is more of a fresh spiciness. There's also a fuzzy kind of synthetic vibe initially. It's not unpleasant, it doesn't smell bad. It's just a fuzzy synthetic vibe. I don't know what else to tell you there in terms of describing that. But within a few minutes, that fuzziness and that synthetic kind of opening, it dies away. It has a familiar, almost shower jelly kind of uh, feeling off the top. It is pleasant though as I said, and it is appealing. It's clean, fresh, sweet, and if you smell it right up close, it almost tickles your nose a little bit. The juniper in this fragrance comes in very early on, and when it does come in, it kind of helps push that pineapple further back. So you end up having this blood orange and juniper combo right off the top, mixing in with that green cardamom and the pineapple behind it. As it dries down, the juniper does become the most prominent note to my nose, though you also get some fresh green basil in here and a lively geranium that mix in with that juniper. So it ends up having this fresh, slightly green uh, kind of vibe in the mid. And then once you hit the dry down, this fragrance has sort of a, a light modern woodiness to it, a fresh woodiness to it. Woods are not an official note in the note breakdown. There's no wood to be found here. It's actually uh, oak moss and tonka and patchouli in the dry down. So oak moss, tonka, patchouli, but it does come across with this little bit of woodiness. I don't pick up much patchouli in here at all. I don't pick up what I would usually perceive as tonka, though I imagine the tonka adds a little bit of sweetness in the dry down. And uh, oak moss, not really, not a, not a real oak moss 
kind of note in the dry down, at least to my nose. More than anything, just a fresh kind of woodiness, light, sweet woodiness. Now I talked in the beginning of this video about this reminding me of another fragrance out there, and it definitely does. It's actually a fragrance that I have right behind me here, so I'm gonna grab it. This one, Dolce & Gabbana K. This fragrance reminds me a lot of Dolce & Gabbana K. It's not the exact same as K, but they do share a lot of notes, and they're fragrances that accomplish the same thing. They're both very versatile, mainly spring and summer type of fragrances. They're both mass appealing blue kind of fragrances, as I mentioned before, that lean on citrus and juniper, along with some similar supporting notes, uh, such as the geranium. As I mentioned, they're not the exact same, but definitely in the same family, in the same vein, in the same style of fragrance. So this one does remind me a bit of K. Though I will tell you guys right now that I very much prefer Loam to Dolce & Gabbana K. I think this is a better fragrance overall. Uh, I think that it's more well put together. I think that it's going to be cheaper when this hits discounters, which is another plus. I think the presentation is better on this fragrance as well. And the performance is better on this one. So there are a lot of things that I like more about Loam than Dolce & Gabbana K. Dolce & Gabbana K off my skin, especially through the mid, doesn't smell that great to me personally. It's not something that I really care to wear. But this one never heads into that territory where I smell it and go, mm, shouldn't have worn this. This one the whole way through, very pleasant. As I mentioned, performance for this one, very solid. It lasts eight plus hours off of my skin without issue. Projects very solidly for the first couple of hours and it leaves a nice personal scent cloud for a few hours after that. This isn't one of those fragrances where it projects very well and then all of a sudden turns into a skin scent. This one leaves a nice personal scent cloud. As you're moving around, you're gonna have a solid little scent trail for a number of hours after it stops projecting heavily. It is more a spring and summertime fragrance, though it approaches all season versatility. You've got a lot of blue fragrances that realistically you could wear year round. This one, not quite as versatile, in my opinion, as something like a Bleu de Chanel or a Dior Sauvage, but it's close. Because of the freshness, I think that this is more a spring and summer scent, as I said before, than it is fall and winter, but you could pull it off in fall and winter if it's a fragrance that you really like. The added performance here, the eight plus hours that I get, that's what would help it cut through the cold and last in winter time. It is more of a daytime fragrance for me than it is a nighttime fragrance, though because of that mass appeal, you could pretty easily pull this off during the night as well. More a casual fragrance or a date night fragrance. You could wear it to the office though, uh, because it does have that versatility, that mass appeal. Wouldn't go too heavy in the office though. You don't wanna come across too heavy handed with your fragrance in situations like that. For me, maybe a little too youthful for something that I would wear formally, but if you're a younger guy, you could pull this off formally as well. Again, it's a blue fragrance. It's got that versatility factor. So for me, for all of those reasons, this is basically like taking the Dolce & Gabbana K DNA and improving it. That's what this fragrance is. Better performance, a little better versatility because of the performance. You could wear this in cold weather. And I think it's just, again, better put together. Dolce & Gabbana K in actuality was one of my least favorite releases of last year. I just really didn't like it. It didn't work very well off of my skin. I know a lot of people out there do like this fragrance, but for me, it was just a miss. This one though, pretty good. This one, as of this video, is going for 39 euros in Europe for this size, which is 60 milliliters, two fluid ounces. The 100 milliliter size is going for, I think, 54 euros. So that's pretty cheap, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The problem with that is if you order from Europe, you're gonna pay really high shipping prices. Shipping for this one, 25 euros. So you end up paying 39 euros for the fragrance and then 25 euros for shipping. I mean, even with that, that's still only 64 euros, so it's not crazy expensive. But once this hits discounters in the US, I imagine that this is going to be very 
affordable. And that's when you wanna check this one out. Now, if you really, really, really want this fragrance right now, I'll leave a link in the description to where I purchased my bottle and you can order from that website. Uh, it actually gets to the US really quickly, believe it or not. But again, you do have to pay that really high shipping price. At the end of the day, this is a blue fragrance and it does share similarities to Dolce & Gabbana K. So for a lot of people out there, that's gonna be a turnoff. They're going to think, ah, it's not really all that unique. There are tons of blue fragrances out there. Why should I care about it? But assuming you pick this up for a good price, again, especially when it comes out in the US, I feel like it's going to be very inexpensive. You're going to be getting a fragrance that has a lot of versatility, that has great performance, that has mass appeal. It's got that compliment factor. And in my opinion, smells like a higher quality, better version of Dolce & Gabbana K. It did take some time to grow on me, but now that I've given it more wear, I think it's very solid. And it's a fragrance that I do anticipate wearing in the upcoming spring. So I think that this could be kind of an under the radar killer kind of fragrance. It's not a brand that carries a lot of cachet. It's not a brand that most people are going to be on the lookout for. Your everyday Joe is not going to know about this brand, not going to know about this fragrance, but people in the know will know that they can pick this up for a good price and it's going to check a whole bunch of boxes for guys out there. And in my opinion, this one, very solid. Actually, I added this to an order almost as a throwaway because uh, I already had a few fragrances that I was ordering from France. I saw this one on there. I had covered it on This Week in Fragrance in the past and I was like, well, it's pretty cheap. It was marked lower than all the other fragrances that I was buying. So I said, why not throw it on there, see how it is. And actually, really solid. I'm glad I got it. If you've smelled this one, Loam Rojas, pronouncing that incorrectly. I'm sure, but if you've smelled this one, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. For people that are into niche fragrances, indie fragrances, fragrances as art, this one is not gonna be for you. But if you're looking for a fragrance, as I mentioned, good performance, year-round versatility, compliment factor, check it out. It is maybe a little bit of a youthful fragrance because of some of the sweetness in here, but I don't think the sweetness is so heavy-handed that it's only able to be used by younger guys. I think, again, there is a lot of versatility here. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all of your support, and I'll see you all again tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys.